today's examination is entitled The Union of the Faithful and First Corinthians, a biblical and a historical examination. An argument that we, uh, we hear a number of times from the Sede Vicantis is that the grace proper to the sacrament, sacrament uh, the union of the faithful, is not brought about if we do not have the words for many in the Mass. And as such, uh, we'll be examining if we need to have the words for many in order for the union of the faithful to be brought about. So do we need to have the words for many in order for the union of the faithful to be brought about as the Sede Vacantis put forth? Well, we're going to examine the Biblical Greek of 1 Corinthians and we will be dealing with the English RSV version. 1 Corinthians 10.16 And this is canonized Catholic scripture. The cup of blessing which we bless, it is, not, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Examining 1 Corinthians 10.16 in the Greek, we have the Greek word koinonia. Koinonia. Koinonia for communion. A better rendering, a rendering that I would prefer to put in 1 Corinthians 10 would be, is it not a communion in the blood of Christ? A koinonia. That is a Greek term that is being put forth. When we go on to 1 Corinthians 10, 17, we read, Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. In other words, they are united. The faithful are united here in this passage. And we will read just what the, the, the consecration formula is to unite these individuals. As we are told, they are one body in this passage. We will fast forward to 1 Corinthians 11.23 For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And uh, if we're examining 1 Corinthians 11.23, uh, we see quite clearly that this, this command he received from Ati Ati Ha Kurias Jesus. We see from the Lord himself, from Jesus Christ, we read. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11.24 reads, And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Moving onwards, if we read the uh, 1 Corinthians 11.25, In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We can see that this consecration formula lacks the terms for many. You can go into all of, all that you want and say, oh, well, he doesn't say for all. That is not what I'm arguing. Our argument is that we do not need the terms for many in order to bring about a valid sacrament. The argument that is fallacious, that is brought about by the Sede Vicantis, is that the union of the faithful, the grace proper to the sacrament, is not brought about without the terms for many. Well, that's not what the Bible says. That is not what Catholic doctrine says. Catholic doctrine tells us that the koinonia, the communion of the faithful, the participation in the blood of Christ is brought about by the participation in the Eucharist in a consecration formula that doesn't have the formula for many. So, what are we going to take? Are we going to take the clear biblical Greek of 1 Corinthians? Or are we going to take the arguments of individuals that can't read an ounce of Greek, can't read the patristic sources, have no idea what the Bible is talking about? Or are we going to trust the Bible? Don't trust me. I don't care if anybody thinks that I, I'm incompetent. Don't trust me. Trust what God has said in the scriptures and the tradition of the church. Trust what Jesus Christ has left us. Read theology manual at the theology manual. These arguments don't exist. Read ought. Read Tanqueray. Read Human. Read them. You'll find that the fallacious arguments are nonsensical and they're silly. God bless you.